Let's make a chicken kebab. So first of all, I'm going to introduce you to all of the ingredients that we'll need for today's recipe. White cabbage and red cabbage, satsiki, cucumber ribboned, cherry tomatoes sliced, sliced lettuce, pita breads and wraps, chicken thighs, olive oil, chicken stock, salt and pepper, paprika, dried dill, dried parsley, dried onion granules, apple cider vinegar, the juice of one lemon, and powdered garlic. Now, there are two ways essentially we can make this recipe. We can add all of the ingredients directly into a bowl and mix in the bowl, or if you wish to, it's a good idea to marinate, which will allow it to infuse more of the flavors. And if that's the case, we can add everything directly into a bag or into the bowl, then into the bag, and then allow it to infuse whilst it sits in the bag. We can also move the ingredients around in the bag and allow the flavours to distribute much more evenly. So I'm going to show you both methods. So first of all, we want to add the olive oil. The parsley. the dill, the paprika, the salt and pepper, the onion granules, the garlic, apple cider vinegar, and the lemon juice. Now as I mentioned a moment ago, we can simply mix in the bowl. However, in order to get a really good even distribution of flavours, we can add this directly into a food bag. Which would give us much better ability to mix like so and we can mix the ingredients spreading all the flavors now once that's done we can leave this in the fridge to marinate for a few hours and that will intensify the flavors and allow everything to soak into the chicken which will give it more flavor make it more succulent. So, once we've marinated suitably and we're happy with the marinade and we're happy with the chicken, we can begin the process of cooking. For the next part, the first thing we need to do is remove the lid and press the brown saute mode. Now generally there is more than enough oil in order to fry the chicken, however I personally prefer to add a few lugs extra just to help with the frying process. We also want some tongs at this stage in order to remove the chicken without touching them with our bare hands. 
and we're just waiting for the heat to come up to somewhere between halfway and full temperature. So the temperature meter is about halfway, so we can begin to add our first pieces of chicken. We're going to do this in two, possibly three batches, depending on what fits into the cooker, as to not overcrowd the pot so everything can cook nice and evenly. So we have our chicken, we have our tongs, you can just place the chicken. Three pieces at a time. I'm also going to be using a separate set of tongs for once the chicken's cooked. You then want to move it across onto a plate. After a couple of minutes on each side, we can turn them once again because we just want to make sure the chicken's brown nicely. Pre-searing helps to bring out the flavour in the meat and it helps to infuse all of the herbs that we've added to the mixture. So once again, after a couple of minutes, or every two minutes, you just want to turn the chicken over. And see the browning starting to appear. I think another minute or so and this chicken will be ready to put on the plate and we'll be ready to add the next batch. So at this point, I think we're ready to add to the next batch. So we can see the chicken's nice and browned on the outside. I'm now going to go back to my raw tongs. And add the next batch of chicken. Now using our cooked tongs, we can bring these across onto the plate. So we have six pieces of cooked chicken. Now for the next part, we want to add the stock. I've often mentioned just making sure to give the stock a good stir, as there can often be a lot of flavour left behind if we don't stir. So we can add the stock and give that a bit of a scrape just to get the flavour off the bottom of the pot whilst it's still in brown sauté mode. For the next part we can switch off brown and sauté and we're going to want a steamer. So we want to add our steamer and using our cooked tongs add the chicken And then try to evenly spread the chicken in the pot. We also have a lot of flavour in the juice that's left on the plate. Want to make sure to add that too. We then want to ensure the lid is set to locked and not bent. And select manual and 10 minutes. Now, if you have the turbo option, you can choose the turbo option and that will take it down to six minutes. Now I'm going to select the regular option for 10 minutes. This will take approximately five minutes to come up to pressure and then we're going to leave it for a five minute natural pressure release. So once the timer is completed, we'll leave it for five minutes and then we will depressurize. 
Now, meanwhile, whilst we're waiting for the chicken to cook, we want to toast the pitters. Now, if in the event they don't expand, but you do think they're done, you can remove them out of the toaster. Sometimes that does happen. So the next thing we want to do is simply slice along the edge to open the pitta. And using some tongs, we can just open the pocket slightly, ready to add the filling. Like so. Or, alter or alternatively, you can use wraps. Depending on your preference, the options either way, whichever you prefer. Now the crock pot has just reached its timer and we're going to leave it for five minutes and naturally depressurize. So we've reached our five minute depressurized natural release. We can switch off the crock pot and turn the valve to release the remaining pressure. We can now remove the lid. And for the next part, we just want to slice the chicken into smaller manageable pieces. Now we can either add the chicken directly into a bowl for serving, or we can add it directly to a plate. So now it's time for the taste test. The subtle flavour of the herbs combined with the salad and the little crispiness of the pitta is an absolutely incredible combination. And to think this is actually a very healthy alternative as a lot of people have uh, an idea that a kebab is not a healthy option. It really depends on what you cook it with and the oils that you use and the temperature that you use to cook with. A 
this is a fantastic option, absolutely incredible. Very, very simple to make, really, really healthy. As you can see, loads of salad, loads of goodness in there. Wholemeal pita, high in fiber, really, really good for you. This is one of those meals that you could eat all day, every day, regularly. It's very, very tasty. Very, very simple and very, very healthy. We're now moving on to our wrap. So with the wrap, the great thing about it is you can fit a lot more in. If you're feeling hungry and you really want to devour, then I would suggest a wrap is probably a better option. As you can see, essentially you can get more or less a whole entire meal all in one. Now you can eat this like this, or you can cut it down the middle, like so. Fold the underside. And take a bite. For me, I personally prefer wraps, although the crisp and the crunch with the pizza is also very tempting. I like the softness of the wrap and all the flavors, the way they combine, and you have the softness, the crisp of the salad, and then the tender and juiciness of the chicken with the subtle hints and flavors of the herbs. Everything combines fantastically well for a really tasty, healthy, flavorful meal. If you like what you've seen today, simply like and subscribe for the latest videos. Thanks again. See you in the next one.